Hi everyone, John from Greybeard 3D here, and today we're going to be looking at the uh, new Prusa Mini, or a recently shipped Prusa Mini, to the one I received in December. Uh, I bought my first Prusa Mini when it was brand new. Uh, I think the very first day is when I ordered it, within like the first hour, and I was one of the lucky few to get one in early December. Uh, however, some things have changed on the Prusa Mini, so we're going to look at what's coming today compared to what I received in December. So we'll start by opening the box, uh, putting it together, and then uh, go, in, go ahead and do a visual comparison between the two. And if I notice anything while building it, uh, I'll mention that as well. But uh, yeah, just go ahead and stay tuned. Uh, this should be a nice, easy stream today. Uh, I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. So as I said, today we're gonna be building this uh, Prusa. It just came in the mail. I haven't opened it, obviously. Um, fresh from Prague, it was a little bit of a headache getting it from uh, FedEx, but uh, I managed to finally get it today. I'm going to build this and then uh, just, like I said, do a side by side comparison between that and the original I received in December. Uh, so let me try to switch the view here to uh, second camera here. Uh, so uh, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started by opening this up. Uh, get some of this black wrapper off. <clears throat> you can find the original stream where I did the one from December uh, on my channel. Um, so uh, if you want to go back and, and see what that one had uh, as far as unboxing and everything, you can look at that. And I do apologize for the loud noise from the uh, wrapper. Uh, this black plastic wrap can be quite loud. Hey, uh, Maker Jake, how are you doing? So, um, I really wish uh, I could have done the stream earlier. Like I said, I had some problems with FedEx. Uh, so, a little bit of a headache getting this today. Um, I need it though. It was, uh, it was a real eventful night. All right, so there we go. The upside down Prusa mini box. You never know which side you're going to open when you're uh, unwrapping this thick black plastic. Um, there was no signature required on the package, but uh, FedEx felt that they didn't want to leave it at the door. Um, and they're like, well, maybe they didn't want to leave a 3D printer at the door. And I said, I assure you, it's wrapped in black plastic. Nobody knows what's inside of it. So, we're almost in this thing. Hey, Sean Butler, how are you doing? And again, I apologize for the loud noise of the plastic. Okay, let's see. Now, uh, one of the things I heard Prusa did was uh, kind of beef up the box. And uh, I believe they said they sent the boxes out for independent testing and verification uh, to make sure that they survived the trip. My first mini didn't have any real problems with the box, but uh, uh, this one, it seems like it's okay. Uh, there is a place up here for a handle, but there is no handle here. Um, the box does feel very sturdy. And I do notice I have a few little kind of like dings in the box um, from maybe being dropped or something. So hopefully everything's okay. I hear a little bit of rattling here too. So we'll see what, what happens with that. Um, I wish I had a better setup for you guys for the camera. Uh, I am in the middle of a move. So half of my studio is packed up. Uh, nearly everything in this office is packed up. Uh, due to COVID, I did end up unpacking a bunch of printers that I had packed up uh, just to make sure uh, that I could keep up and produce uh, PPE and other things for um, people on the front lines. So here's the new box. Again, I do apologize for the noises. Looks like we have a Prusa face shield. So it came with a shield, a headband, bottom reinforcement, and a rubber band. Uh, this uh, white material on the shield is probably a protective layer. Very thick material. Um, 
I've been building sh uh, face shields in the US. Uh, it's quite hard to find all the materials. The hardest thing to find right now is this elastic. This elastic is very hard. Uh, hey, Paul, how are you doing? So that's cool that they're giving a face shield away with it. Uh, it does look like they do print the uh, stacked version, so the bottom can be a little bit rough. Uh, but all in all, it looks like a really good print still. And uh, cool, I have an official Prusa made face shield. Um, this particular printer was ordered uh, in November. So it is that is about how far behind they are. So we have a congratulations. So they tell you, you know, where to get the manual, where to get the guides. Um, the drivers, etc., uh, etc. Et they tell you where to go for everything. So let's see what else we have in here. Oh, Paul, I'm doing uh, I'm doing okay. Like I said, I'm in the middle of this move, so it's been kind of crazy for me. Uh, half this house is packed up. Uh, going through closing on the new house has been uh, just a lot of different things to do. So here's all the, I guess the a sizing sheet for bolts and stuff. Now the Prusa Mini I believe is still only four bolts to put together, but they give you the standard sizing sheet just in case you come across other bolts and you need to see what size it is. Um, and then they, they give you this uh, and it says, hi, apart from the printer, this package also contains parts of a face shield. You might wonder why we are sending that to you. Take this shield as an inspiration on how you could use your 3D printer to help others and also as an invitation to the worldwide 3D printer community, which is now printing shields for medical workers, police, and other professionals on the front line. Together with this community, we have already produced several tens of thousands of these shields. All important information about used materials, shield production, assembly procedure, disinfection process is available at uh, prusa3d.com slash COVID-19. If you know somebody who needs a shield immediately, we would appreciate if you decide to give this one away. So, uh, and in case, don't open the back. Stay safe, Joe Prusa. And then there's nothing on the back of that. So the shield is, uh, I guess, an inspiration to people who are new to 3D printing, and they got their very first printer here. Uh, it did come with an assembly manual, uh, pretty thick. This is the English version, and um, the back side of the assembly manual is the 3D printing handbook. So half of it is a handbook, and half of it is a assembly manual power cable it's a very standard uh, computer power cable this is now I did not get this on my original uh, Prusa Mini uh, but this is the filament sensor so looks like a pretty neat uh, little kit there um, my original Mini did not have it uh, the spool holder uh, I really like the spool holder um, I've been using it a lot um, it's, it's kind of modeled after, after the Tush design, um, and Tush stands for the ultimate spool holder. Uh, so it's modeled after that, and it seems to have some improvements to that. So it, it really does work out nicely. Uh, and here's all the parts you get with this. So uh, it looks like a bunch of little screws. Um, it seems like it's actually a bit more than, than what the first one came with, but we'll see. What else do we have in here? Oh, screws and bearings to the spool holder. Sorry if it's washed out for you. So, was the other one washed out? Let me show that one more time just in case. So, uh, looks like it comes with a couple screws up there, the wrench, some lubricant, a needle, and then some spare parts, including extra um, Bowden coupler. Uh, I don't know what they call them, but they're like little crushed down to grip it. Oop, sorry for the noise. And some samples of Prusament. We have Galaxy Black and Azure Blue. That's really cool. So how are, how are you guys doing, Paul and Sean? Uh, and Maker Jake. Uh, and then some gummy bears, of course. Oh, what is this? We have some filament, I think. Some Prusa Galaxy Black. That's awesome. Uh, so this uh, this printer was kind of a surprise for me. I don't actually know what it came with. Um, long story short, a buddy at work ordered it. Uh, so, you know, Prusa didn't even know I was getting this, I guess, technically. So 
Uh, but Buddy at work ordered it, and then he decided he couldn't wait long enough, so he ordered a Mark III. And I said, hey, don't cancel your mini order. I will wait for it and give you the money. Uh, so that's the uh, regular spring steel sheet. Here's the textured sheet. Clean only when cold and do not clean with acetone. Now I think that's the first time I've seen that warning on their sheets. I think so, I don't know. Anybody else have seen it before? Uh, the USB drive, which comes with the firmware and everything else. All right, this is the test sheet. Let's see, so. Of course, everything comes out okay with it. Because if it didn't come out okay, I doubt I'd be receiving it. <laughs> so yes, the test sheet confirms that they tested it. Uh, and then we have the LCD screen. Uh, very cool. Um, I think the biggest change between this one and the original one I received is they beefed up some of the printed parts. So we'll see. Okay, that feels attached. That can go. Um, we might be at a part where we can lift some of this. Okay, that's like a little motor packer. There we go. So we're getting down to it. Wow, yet another layer. I think all these internal layers are for protection. Um, I guess they had problems, so. All right, so there we have it. Uh, there is the, the bed portion, the uh, X or the Z and uh, X portion, uh, and then the power supply. And that's basically all the components. So it's, it's these two pieces and the LCD you saw earlier. So let me grab this power supply out of here. It's a little bit tight in there. There we go. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, how is school going? Uh, uh, Maker Jake, um, what school are you in right now? All right, so there's the unit. Very cool. Uh, it looks the same. The bone tube up top is a little bit more kinked up <laughs> than, uh, than the old one. Uh, there are some changes there, I believe. We'll, we'll get these uh, side by side and look at them. But I see a few minor things, I think. I don't know. It, it could all be uh, imagination. All right, let me set this down somehow. I got to get this box out of my way. All right, sorry for the video. Uh, let me get this one last piece out and then we'll get this box out of the way and we can start putting this together. All right, well that's that. Let's finish the box. And here we have this. Let's ditch it. All right. Okay. So, I'll be able to free up a hand now uh, and set this down. Uh, for some reason, I feel like I have heard of uh, the Velman, uh, but I'm not. I'm not drawing it. So you're in high school, and how's high school going? Uh, are you a senior? And if you are, that could be unfortunate um, because of the graduation stuff. But all right. So I think this is the exact same power supply. Uh, it's the Meanwell. So I actually have it right over here. I'll compare the numbers real quick. Yeah, the power supply has the same model number. Um, so it appears nothing has changed there. Same power. Um, I did have, uh, the Prusa Mini itself has actually been going very well. I've, I've had it, like I said, for, um, what, five months now. Uh, it's been going very well. Uh, I did have a partial clog the other day, which resulted in this uh, strange little um, stringy mess. Um, so I had to do some cold pulls to get this fixed up. Uh, but other than that, that was the only kind of clog I've ever had with this machine. And I haven't had any other real issues. Uh, I noticed that the belt has kind of started squeaking. You hear that? I don't know if that's coming through on the... Uh, camera but that little squeak there it might just need some oil uh, who knows 
Um, I tried moving the belt uh, side to side to see if I could make it, uh, uh, you know, not squeak, <laughs> but it didn't help. So I, I don't know. Um, all right, I'll move these beds aside. And we'll compare the beds as well to see if anything has changed. Because the original Prusa Mark III, the bed changed quite a few times, especially the um, the powder coated one. But even the non powder coated one changed. And uh, like I don't know, I I have a lot of Prusas, or I have had a lot of Prusas over the, the time. Uh, so we'll get rid of some of the stuff we don't really need. Um, Let's see. I don't know if I'm going to hook up the filament sensor, but maybe I should. Uh, I don't see much value out of it. And then, of course, the gummy bears. Uh, may as well open some of those. Yeah, cold pull. Um, so I read the procedure. I'm going to try to like uh, tell you how, how I did it from memory. Uh, essentially, you heat up, uh, you heat up the uh, uh, printer. You want to extrude a little filament, and I think you heat it up to something like 260. Then you want to extrude a little filament, um, and this brass piece, let me, let me bring the camera closer. That brass piece uh, that's holding the Bowden tube on right above the, uh, the hot end, I had to remove that, and what you want to do is you want it to push some filament through while it's hot, and then what I did is I told it to cool down, and then once the temperature got to about 170, I think I, no, I think I went lower than that, maybe 150. Then I yanked the filament out. And what it's supposed to do is pull out any kind of gunk uh, that could be stuck in there, uh, you know, that is just kind of rolling around and getting in the way. Uh, so that's a, a way of clearing anything out of that nozzle without completely disassembling everything. So um, it wasn't a bad process, but it's not a process I would like to do. I just want the printer to print and not ask me for any favors. All right, so new rule, don't eat gummy bears on stream. Okay, they're very good though. So there's the screen. Uh, one thing that did change is on the original, some people had problems with the button. My button has not given me any problems yet, knock on wood. Uh, but uh, that's it. They, they ended up switching to a different button. And it comes with a ribbon cable. Sure, no problem, Will. So, yeah, it's a, it, like I said, a quick way to possibly fix a clog or a partial clog on a, on a hot end. Okay. So, let me back this up a little bit see what you guys can see. We'll dump out what they call the accessory bag. Okay, so you get some of this stuff. Uh, this is the needle and stuff. I don't recommend using the needle. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not a fan. Then you have the lubricant. Oh, that jumped out of my hand. Um, Prusa branded lubricant, just in case. There we go. Uh, these are the feet, I believe, for the, for the unit. Uh, this is the accessories bag, so you should not need to open this. Uh, these are all spare parts, and it's uh, spare parts for the Mini V2. And I guess they're calling it the Mini V2 for, I don't know what reasons, maybe just because the printed parts changed. I believe all they really changed was the printed parts. Um, and of course the button on the LCD. Uh, however, if you had a problem with your button, um, of course they would, uh, replace it for you. Uh, so not a big deal. It's unfortunate. Um, and then I'll open up this filament sensor just because I know I'm, I'm going to need all this stuff out. It comes with the tools you need, which are two. A wrench and an allen. stuff away. Probably should just throw that away. Oh, I wish they included a glue stick with it. Uh, so I am a huge fan of the glue stick. And I know you can just go out and buy some other. Hey, Mr. Bertram, how are you doing? Hey, Mad Monkey. I guess uh, 
Uh, I guess the stream over there just ended at uh, uh, your daily micron, huh? So, um, yeah, Chris, I, I saw Chris was doing a stream and I, I kind of already said, hey, I'm going to do this at 10. Uh, I should pay more attention though. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I really like this glue stick. Uh, so, I wish they included it with every printer, but uh, nonetheless, you can go buy glue at other places. All right. And of course, here's the, the big the big piece. All right, so the assembly is rather simple. You essentially screw it together, uh, I believe like this. Maybe that's backwards. <laughs> uh, but you essentially screw it together like this and put the LCD screen on and hook up a bunch of wires and you're done. Uh, so compared to like a Mark III, it's quite simple. Will this stand up on its own? Okay, that's very cool that it stands up on its own. Um, Copying a Prusa Mark II S or buying an Ender. Uh, if you already have printers or you already have experience building printers, it could be fun to copy the Prusa Mark II S. I really like that printer. <laughs> why isn't this thing together yet? Because uh, I talk. That's why. Sorry. Okay. So there's uh, in here, in these channels, there's a bunch of these little nuts. Uh, and you just want to kind of get them in place or somewhat in place. Uh, but I guess I should look at the instructions. The assembly manual. Um, so. I want to not skip anything. Foam pads. Yeah, so they want us to put all these foam pads on. All right. He's had 20 minutes. See? Wow, brutal today, brutal. So I know some people race at building their printers, um, like uh, 3D Maker Noob, but he has he has like a record for, um, what are they, the Mark Threes or something? So, <laughs> that's like 10 minutes extra. All right, all right. It's different on stream, guys. <clears throat> yeah, you can probably copy the Mark II S with uh, about three hundred bucks. I don't know. I probably should have done this slightly different. Oh well. Uh, all right, so we have foam pad feet on this thing now. The problem is I'm going to put the foam pad feet on this control box, and this control box is going to want to uh, wobble. It doesn't quite say, oh, there's one spare. So I was like, it doesn't say what to do with it. So the last foot they want, let me see, right up here, they actually have a space for it. Perfect foot size space. All right, but now I bet you this thing won't stand up on its own. Yeah, see? Now it's a pain in the butt to build. <clears throat> so this thing does not want to stand anymore because now it has a foam pad on it. Okay, so it wants us to open the electronics box, uh, essentially pull out some cables, um, get them out of the way. So the, uh, the lead screw right here, is kind of free floating. You can see it wobble there. Uh, the free floating is done on purpose. It actually helps it print better. Um, but what's interesting is the mini hangs the motor from the top where the uh, Mark III and the others uh, have it from the bottom. Come on, what's it take to get this screw out? Uh, so I grew up on the MB. What's the MB? Oh, Muppet Babies. Hey, Chris. Thanks for joining the stream. Okay. Yes, Chris. It's not done now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, you guys kill me. <laughs> can the focus be a touch sharper? I can get it closer. 
I don't know if it'll be sharper. All right. So they want this shoved through. And I guess they want that poked in there. All right, so if you guys want to see how to build printers really fast, jump into Chris's channel. He builds them fast. I do not build them fast. I build them my way, and I'm happy. All right, you missed all of it. Can I start over? Uh, so I opened the box, Chris. That's as far as I got. See, I don't like that. Why did they do that? I don't like that, guys. I'll probably pay for this later. <laughs> he doesn't want to go. So I'm really particular about my cables and that was just tucked the wrong way. So there, that one is good. Cables right. All right. What? There's a box? Yes. Uh, it came with a box. Uh, the box was nice. Okay. So we have all that done. Pretty simple. We wrapped it under. Uh, they want us to tuck it in. Okay. It's tucked in. All right. We want to find our screws. And here they are. See, they set you up for failure here, man. They make you put the rubber foot on it like it was perfectly fine without the rubber foot. But now that I have the rubber foot on it, it's going to fall over if I let go of it. So I have to do everything one handed. <laughs> Zerbo. Uh, Zerbo build. That would be cool. Somebody change this all out for uh, linear rails, right? Something. Okay. Uh, the 40 mil, which I guess is a super long one. Let's see. Turn this around. Bring these forward and this forward. And so they did something really cool with this. Um, let me see if it's going through. There's an, a channel for the screw going through the entire box. So all the way through the box, uh, there is a channel just for one of the screws. It's the really long one. And you want to just poke it through and try to catch one of these little silver uh, uh, nuts in there. I feel I'm not hitting it at all. Oh, the wood frame on a uh, Mark II? I think the wood frame is fine. Uh, th that printer is designed where the, the wood really isn't going to make much of a difference. Uh, at least that's my opinion. I don't know. Something should be in direct contact with the frame. Yeah. Okay, so uh, all I'm doing is lining up these silver nuts. Uh, there's three in all, there's three screws. Yep, it's all pretty simple. And then there's the last screw. And the last screw is just going right in through the top, I guess. Uh, so I am just gonna line this one up pop that one down there all 
Okay. Uh, let me just check my position. Joining the parts together. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, so they don't really... They don't really talk about where to go. Don't fully tighten yet. Yep, okay. See, I'm way ahead. I'm already on step like 16 or something. Okay, move the entire axis, I guess, all the way back. Okay, and then there's a notch. I think I might have tightened it too tight. So, there we go. And so we put in three screws right here and right here is a little notch that just shows that uh, that piece and that piece should be lined up. Uh, at least that's my interpretation of the instructions. Uh, I did build the original, but I don't remember anything from that, that day. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess tighten down everything. Yeah, so tighten the top, then tighten the, the long one that's in the deep channel. So that channel runs all the way through this case to the extrusion. And then tighten the last one, which is this one on this outside. Um, I think the distance is... Is the distance measured from the back? I think the distance on the Mark II is measured from the back. So, yep, I think we're good. I think we are tight. I'll recheck these. That's it. Cool. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, it says to eat a, a gummy bear, but I'm not going to eat any more gummy bears. Uh, then it says to get the screen. So here we have a screen. Uh, pull off the tab. You can't buy the buddy board. What buddy board? Oh, are you gonna, you're talking about making a mini? I don't think you can make a mini yet. Uh, hey, this is Keith. So we'll go ahead and put this in. Put a slight angle on it. It's pretty simple. All right. LCD cable. Um, I think they want us to do this. You kind of run the LCD cable up this channel here. Crusoe lets me add the buddy board to my cart, then buy it. <laughs> no. I don't know. I like the Mini a lot. I can't wait for the Mini to not only be in stock regularly, but also for the farm software to be kind of worked out. Um, right now, without the farm software, it's like, yeah, it's a great printer, but what I really kind of look forward to is controlling it uh, or controlling a bunch of them. So that'll be cool. Pro tip. Yep. All right. All that's done. Okay, we got to connect all these cables. So let's look at the back of this machine. So far, I don't really see too much different between this and the original, honestly. Um, there's a little bit uh, different on the way they mount like these extruder cables and stuff. Uh, but visually, at quick glance, yeah, I'm not seeing too much. We'll see. We'll, we'll look at them side by side. All right. 
Oh, there's another cable in here. They tucked the cable away. Yeah, I hear a lot of good things about that SKR. Push it through the hole, right it around the outside, and plug it in. Okay, so this is the uh, let's see if I have it. So this is the Y cable. This is this is what controls the bed motor, and you just want to essentially plug it in back here in the only empty uh, slot, and then tuck everything down, and you're good to go. All right. Connect the heater and the thermistor. So here we go. There should be a thermistor plug somewhere. There we go. It's probably that one. Right up near the front. And finally, the plug for the bed heater right there on the board. Cool. And they say kind of tuck that in too. So we'll get to it when we put the lid back on. All right, filament sensor. This is an optional piece. Uh, with the Prusa Mini, I don't really see much value in getting this piece. Uh, but like I said, I kind of acquired this from somebody who already ordered it. So no big deal. Um, Slide the filament sensor into the PTFE tube. Yeah, not sure what they mean there, but there's already a PTFE tube in it. I see. So, yep, filament sensor, it looks like this thing goes right in here. And you slide the tube together. So, you want to fully push in this tube into the filament sensor and then tighten down that, that screw that clamps it, it looks like. So, we'll tighten that down. And you just want to make sure it won't slide. Hmm. Oh, okay, and then they want a piece of filament. Oh, where do I have some spare filament? Okay. Look at this cool color I got the other day, guys. This is Hatchbox ABS. And check out this color. It is like this metallic blue. You can actually buy the Prusa Bed. Yeah, 85 bucks is expensive. So, I have somewhere, let me open our beer. All right, so they just want you to take some filament and just make sure it slides in. And it does. You can hear that click too. Yeah. That's a good test of the filament center. You heard the click. All right, <clears throat> and then finally this piece just clips in right up here. There's only like so many spots open on this board. There's not much else you can do with it. 
Uh, and then they want you to run it around here to the side. Maybe I should have clipped that in differently. I'll just do it from this side. Okay. All right, now I think we're ready to put this top cover back together. Before covering the electronics, make sure the square nut is correctly positioned. Yes, it is. Uh, because uh, there's a nut right here that can fall out with the movement of the printer. Insert the back hole. So what we want to do is insert this into the back here. That's probably going to tuck forward somehow. Yeah. And so the heat bed bundle, the filament sensor cable comes out the top. So it all kind of just gets mashed down together. It's all a mesh. And this piece here, this funny thing here is what kind of divides all the cables for you. So let me angle that down for you again. All right. <clears throat> goes like this this goes like this we almost have everything mashed yeah that feels mashed guys Smash it good. Yeah, I'm smashing it, man. It's it's all smashed. So there's this new meme going around. I, or I, I don't know if it's new or not. I'm, I'm kind of late to the game on a lot of things. But uh, they're taking the, the original Shrek 1 video, and they're speeding it up every time something happens in the movie. And the, I think one of the first ones was, every time Shrek smiles, the movie speeds up. And so you get through the entire movie in like five minutes. And then somebody else made another one where uh, every time... Uh, Shrek takes a footstep, the video speeds up. The things you find when you're on YouTube. Has anybody seen those things? Anyway, uh, the reason I bring it up is because uh, Smash Mouth, I think, is uh, the first song on that video. Okay. This guy does not want to go in. It's all lined up. Everything's lined up. It does not want to go into that square nut again. Oh, I might have got it. There we go. You know, I, I think the uh, I think the actual clickety switchy thing is uh, better than the optical sensor. Uh, the optical sensor. I want to say it was kind of like not much of a win or not as much of a win for the Prusa Mark III as it originally was touted. Uh, it was originally, I believe, supposed to detect any kind of uh, filament jams, uh, anything like that, any slowdowns, uh, and kind of like let, let the user know and uh, let them intervene. Uh, however, it didn't quite work out that way. And then uh, they just had it just to detect filament, and then that still wasn't working the right way. And then they ended up uh, actually switching it all out. So the optical sensor is no longer what interfaces with the filament. It is a steel ball and a magnet. And the magnet will then trip, uh, these magnets will uh, trip the sensor, the optical sensor, and it's, it's all very different. Anyway. Uh, Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm, am I real old on the meme thing, uh, on this, the whole Shrek meme? Like I said, I'm, I am late to some games. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I don't like that. It's wobbly. That's good. Maybe it's these things. I don't know. Maybe it'll settle down. No, the other one's much more stable. Maybe it's just time and pressure. I'm making a diamond here. Uh, you know, I didn't have problems with the transparent. I had problems with some super shiny uh, 
PETG, I believe. Um, but the transparent worked for me. I don't, <laughs> and I think that that might have been Prusa's problem too. Uh, when they did testing, it worked for their transparent. And then, you know, when it got out to the field, everybody had so many different filaments. Uh, there were just some types that it didn't like. So, go figure. Okay. I think we might be about ready to power this thing up. I don't know. Anything I'm forgetting here? Maybe we can just look at them side by side. I guess I'm forgetting spool holder, but I don't really care. You should see the spool holders I'm using these days. All right, let's look at this other one. All right, and where are these sheets? Did it catch fire? <laughs> That's funny. All right, so uh, you're gonna have to forgive me on this uh, when you see my other sheet, um, but so there are some changes there. All right, I'll, I'll show you the back side of it. Yeah, I'll show you the back side. All right, so here's the new sheet. Uh, they have very obvious grid lines, original Prusa Mini written on the side, um, and then some, let me lift this up a little bit. Hey, 3D print Viking. Um, so this is the new sheet. So they have hardened steel sheet, etc., cetera, uh, print area, and then grid lines. Very nice. Here's the old sheet. And I know it has fingerprints everywhere. So they have a lot of the same markings, but the print lines are very uh, subtle. It's kind of hard to see in there. And they have these other warnings on here, which I guess they removed from the new sheet. Um, and then they have original Prusa Mini out in the uh, print area, where on the new one, it's out on the side. So um, some subtle changes there, no functional changes. There are still grid lines in there. I know it's not coming through on camera very well, but there are grid lines in there. They're just harder to see. So uh, let's look at the uh, powder coated sheets, see if those change. Oh, so if I over tighten the post screws, I've put it out of square. All right, these look identical. Yeah, so there's no differences there that I can easily see. So those are the same. Let's look at what else there might be. So the front of the units look pretty much the same. Uh, everything there is, is similar. Um, I'm not seeing much in there. The box construction looks similar and I know I'm going back and forth a lot. Uh, I think, like I said, some of the big difference is gonna be uh, in the hot end, especially with how this cable is held. Uh, because when you go all the way to the right, oh, see all this extra slack, okay. See all this slack in here? I'm all the way to the left. All right, look at this original. I'm all the way to the left. There is zero slack in that cable. And if I let go, it will spring back on me. So you know the motor has to fight to print over here. Um, I know that this mod up here is helping some, but I guarantee they lengthen that cable because <laughs> this has like nothing. That is a stretch. So. Uh, that is, I guess, one of the known problems with this original one. Uh, another area is going to be this holder here. Um, it's a very weak holder. And then the new one has this nice beefy holder on here where it's all part of the frame or the, the whole. Heck, it's even attached to the fan up here. So that's pretty cool. So I over tightened it. Uh, you know, before I go down that road, I'm just going to make sure that it's not just the feet <laughs> before I start saying, ah, is it tight? Is it not too tight? Uh, simple enough to fix though, if I did over tighten it. 
Uh, what were the original feet like? Okay, so the original feet were different. The original feet were these round stickers, I guess. So, and the new ones are these oval stickers. I don't know if it makes a difference. It's fine. It's probably why this one's more stable is because it, it's had time to kind of kind of sink in there. Um, for the most part, everything else looks the same. The thickness of the, the steel rods are the same. Um, I'm not seeing anything else. But yeah, this, this tight cable here is absolutely a problem. <clears throat> Optical sensor caught fire. I, well, no, I was going to say, I think I still have printers running that original optical sensor, but uh, that's not true. I ended up selling those printers. So, uh, yeah. You can also see like this one sits lower, but it could just be the pads. The pads are very different. All right, let's power this thing up. Let's make sure it's alive, right? All right. Plug this in. Let's see what firmware it comes with. I think the latest is like this is not going in. That feels weird. Uh, there we go. It just didn't feel like it's uh, inserting the right way. Um, I definitely don't want to break a new machine. They didn't fix the tight cables. They certainly fixed that cable. That has a lot of slack in it. <clears throat> All right. Okay. This one out of the way. We're done looking at it for now. And let's power this guy up. So right now it doesn't have any firmware loaded. Uh, I'm going to move one sheet off. Uh, it doesn't have any firmware loaded. I don't think it has whatever the factory has. And the thumb drive is not inserted. So let's see what it does. It says bootloader 1.0, which is normal. Marlin 405, and it welcomes us to the setup wizard. Should we continue? Sure. Okay, cool. So it's telling us how the printer works. Um, and I know this probably isn't focused, uh, or it's too bright or something. Maybe if I get close enough, it will adjust the exposure of the camera to compensate if it can focus. Okay, so it tells you what it's gonna, the information it shares at the bottom of the screen for you. Uh, you know, the nozzle temp, heat bed temp, print speed, uh, Z axis height, and select the filament. All right, press next to run the self-test, which checks for potential issues. Did I build it correctly, or did something get damaged in shipping? We have some movement above. It just moved the uh, x-axis, um, the full length of the axis, and it just raised the z. And now it's moving the y. It's nice that it doesn't squeak like the other one I have. Okay, and now the z is lowering. And I would move the camera for you, but I just got it to focus on the screen. Maybe this laptop camera can kind of, maybe, no. Uh, 
that's kind of bad. So, oof. Uh, when the uh, axis is lowering with this longer uh, X cable, it catches on the top of the motor, the top of the Z motor, and it catches on the edge of the uh, uh, top of the Z tower. I guess we'll call it a tower. Here, let me see if I can show you. So right here, this cable here gets up above all this and it catches when it goes back down. So hopefully uh, it doesn't do that again. But so now it's checking the heaters. The squeak is a bad idler. Thank you, Chris. Sweet. Better with autofocus off. Yeah, probably better with autofocus off. So it's checking the heaters. Uh, looks like it's at a 84 on the hot end, 42 on the bed. All right, is it is it some sort of standard idler, Chris? Uh, where can I go buy a, a decent one? You can smell it cooking. I don't know if you guys can smell that through the uh, camera or not, but uh, it does smell like uh, something burning. Electrical burn. Yeah, I hate the squeak. Hear that? Twenty T, cool. <laughs> Chris has one in his pocket. All right, so all tests finished successfully. We have a nice little. See, I didn't make this screen tight enough. It's too loose. Let me fix this real quick. There we go. Cool. First layer of calibration. Okay, so it's asking me to put in some filament. We'll load some PLA. Let me find PLA. When you guys build this spool holder, that's my tip for you. Leave the screws on the one edge loose so you can quickly slide it back and forth. But you want the screw in there so it won't fall off, but just leave it loose so you can slide it. And then you can uh, quickly adjust it for your spools. So shove the filament in until I feel it stop. Press continue on the screen. And it is feeding the filament in. And we should start seeing the filament come out. Let's get a little bit higher there. Hello filament. No, the color is not correct because I do not see the color. There we go. Star event going on in my Animal Crossing town. The Z is a lead screw, yes. Chris has three in his beard. All right, so the filament came out. Uh, this is the silk type filament, so you'll see it gets uh, really thick when it extrudes. Uh, very typical for it. And then, yes, the filament is correct. Uh, no other color came out but my filament. So 
I guess they don't feed filament throughout the factory. All right, now let's calibrate. Ooh. So uh, this should be very standard Prusa-like uh, process. Uh, if you've used one before, <clears throat> um, it's going to lower and start printing a bunch of zigzag lines. And then you get to adjust the height. Um, I got a lot of ooze. Uh, then you get to adjust the height with the, uh, the, the uh, dial on the screen uh, until you get it tight enough. <clears throat> During the normal leveling procedure, the mini likes to drop the temp down to uh, 170, which I believe is a uh, uh, feature that Chris uses in his pretty PLA profiles. Um, and it keeps it from kind of oozing while it's doing the self-leveling. Uh, however, on this, this self-test or this calibration test, it does not appear to drop it at all. Okay, so I'm not close enough. I'm going to drop the um, nozzle quite a bit here. Yeah. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. Sticking pretty well there. <clears throat> so I'm at about half a millimeter down from uh, zero. Uh, this is silk filament. It's not really fair that I'm using silk because it tends to stick a little bit more. Um, ch -ch -ch. Yeah, Chris, so. I noticed that in your pretty profile, and I noticed they put it on this mini, but why the heck have they not updated the Mark III profiles with it? <laughs> Tell me that, Chris. They're, they're obviously aware. <laughs> All right, and then it's doing this final like layer test thingy. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice technique because, uh, I don't know, this, this whole bed has these little dots. Oh, they use it only for the quality profile. They use it for every profile. Okay, so there is our first layer test. Looks pretty good. Here, let me pull this forward. Why did, why did they not push it forward for me? Why am I fighting this machine? All right. So, looks pretty good. Good enough to, to go with for uh, first go, right? Yeah, it's pretty stuck on there. It didn't bind together though, so I probably do need more squish. I got lucky because I'm using the silk PLA, which likes to stick to the uh, PDI sheet better. Okay. Ooh. It asks if I want to rerun it. I'm fine. Great. And then I get this cute little screen that says, congratulations, uh, you know, happy printing, etc. Okay. So it says no USB when we put in the USB. Let's do that. Actually, let me see which version firmware is on here real quick. Four or five. So it is the latest. Let's go back. Let's see. All these are going to take way too long. The whistle's not too bad. We'll print the whistle. All right. I do like the uh, graphical display of the model that's being printed. 
Um, it's actually a cheat. It's not actually decoding the model. It's just a little uh, thumbnail that uh, Prusa Slicer embeds into the um, uh, G code. So, and while we're here, after or when it starts printing, I'm just going to speed this up to super fast. Oh, is there a face shield bracket on the card? Interesting. Okay, I'm going to stop this. <laughs> So the interesting thing about the face shield bracket is the latest iteration does not fit on the Mini. So we have the Benchy, we have the Nut. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Um, the Screw, Sheep, Buddy, Prusa, Whistle, Tree Frog. Nope, that's it, man. That is it. That would have been cool, Marcus, uh, if they had a face shield on there for you. Because um, I believe the, the very first revision would still fit on a Mini. That would have been cool if they would have given you the uh, PETG for it, like a little sample of it, and the file for it, and given you the plastic already cut. So then all you had to do was print the one piece. Yeah, the, the latest version does not fit the Mini. I happen to have the latest version because they sent it with this printer. And we can look at this. this we've all seen a whistle before. Let's see what we have here. All right, there's the Mini sheet. Yeah, so uh, let me back that up a little bit, get that in line. I'm not good at doing a lot of things at once. Okay, right about there. So it is just a bit to the outside. So yeah, the newest one does not fit. Now, uh, nope. You can't even uh, twist it or angle it to get it to fit on that bed. Uh, I wish I could zoom out for you. Unfortunately, I can't. So we are printing a whistle. And I'm going to do some more live adjusts because I know I'm too far away. I'm sorry if I missed uh, any comments from anybody. Hi to everybody who joined. Hi, Mad Monkey. Uh, Marcus, of course. Hi, Bob. Uh, Chris, I, I said hi to you earlier. Uh, who else was in there? One Raz. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate everybody who showed up. Will Stone. Uh, Richard Crook. And I'm hoping I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, Michael Fox. Mark Owens, thank you so much for joining the stream today. Thank you for checking this out. Uh, essentially, you know, uh, other than lengthening the cables on the um, on the X uh, axis, other than lengthening those cables, anything that has been done to this is, is superficial or 3D printed. And uh, anybody who got an original could easily apply the same fixes to theirs. Um, I have had great luck with the Mini. Uh, I got one of the very first ones that came out. Um, I do not believe that I was sent a cherry-picked one, like some YouTubers have said, you know, early models that went to YouTube people were cherry-picked. Uh, I don't believe I got a cherry-picked one. It just worked for me. Uh, maybe I'm the lucky one. So <laughs> I did have one partial clog, uh, which resulted in this. Uh, that was after over a kilogram of filament of non-stop printing. I, I printed practically 24 hours on the machine. Um, and I started that one up. That was a fresh spool I had just put in. And the very first thing I did was decide to partial clog on me. Uh, a cold pull fixed that for me. Uh, no big deal. 
Uh, and then I haven't had another clog since. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I just got super lucky with the one I got, uh, but it does work. It, it does everything as advertised. Yeah, crash detection does not work well. <laughs> if it detects it, if it had detects it after it or before it actually starts skipping a layer, uh, I don't know. Besides the point, if you're crashing, your print is probably already messed up too bad because you're probably crashing into the print because it peeled up or it curled. Welcome, Maddie. Thanks for joining. Uh, this one will not recover. Uh, so on, if you go back to my original Prusa Mini video when I unboxed this the first time, I actually forced it to crash and it just failed, uh, meaning it, it skipped the layers and just kept going. Um, I did a power loss and it failed. Uh, although they say power loss is coming, uh, they're doing it via software. Um, but right now, uh, when I did the power loss, it, it does fail. Uh, when I tested the web interface way back when, uh, it was very rudimentary. It didn't do anything, I think, other than show you a temperature. Um, just to see. So, crack open the heat bed connector. Oh, you want to see if they have it flipped upside down. I can do that. I mean, we've all seen a whistle. I can turn off this whistle. Oh, I'm adjusting live Z right now. <laughs> all right. Uh, stop. Yes. Let's look, at, let's look at the first few layers on this whistle. Yeah, I think it came out well. So, that's some shiny filament, guys. Uh, there's the first layer. Oops. Now, this is kind of like out of the box, quick eyeball, live Z tune, whatever. Um, but no, that, that filament looks really sharp, especially in person. I know it doesn't come through quite right on the screen. Uh, so we want to look at the heat bed connector, right? To see if it's mounted under the bed still, or if it's mounted over the bed. So, uh, let me go ahead and pull some of this filament away. So it's out of my way. tuck this up all right let's look at this connector because <clears throat> I remember seeing stuff about that um, what temperature are we at right now still quite too hot to uh, uh, simply unplug it that will cause a jam but there is no power applied to the heat bed at the moment Not even sure how this connector comes apart. Now there's like a, it's like a two piece. Try to grab the screw with my fingers, it falls back into the hole. Yeah. So I kind of see what it is. It looks like this has to slide outward, but I got to get that screw out of my way or it won't slide. Yeah, the print quality looked sharp on this, guys. Um, I thought the original Mini looked sharp, too. It was exactly what I expect from uh, Prusa. 
Pliers. I need pliers. This should slide back if I'm looking at that correctly. Yep. Okay. So that looks like exactly what I saw before. Uh, we have terminals up here. The actual uh, connectors are on the bottom. Let me see if I can get to that for you. So focus. Yeah. So it looks like what I saw before right they appear to not have any problems or they're standing by it saying that how they did this is perfectly fine and you know what I don't really care <laughs> as long as it works and it doesn't catch on fire uh, that's all I care about but yeah this thing has to do so it does like a slide together thing. And that's why I couldn't simply uh, take it apart. Welcome RCCNC. So uh, it could be the wrong way. Talk to Prusa. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in this this uh, controversy. But there it is. That's what they're doing. Even with today's uh, Prusa minis, it could be Hillary's fault. We never know because uh, the emails were lost. So. All right. Copper pads. Maybe they couldn't make it fit uh, without making the uh, connect the uh, housing a little bit bigger. And if that housing is a little bit bigger, it might strike something. I really don't know. I think the one thing for sure, let me move this axis, move Z. The one area of concern would be when it gets lowered after it goes all the way up. You see the cable getting crunched here, and it's, it might spring forward. It might, it might just smash itself. There, it just popped free, and then when you go back down, it go, it catches on. Um, the motor sometimes and it looks like it catches on the edge here uh, that wasn't too bad the first time it lowered it kind of really uh, caught it and you heard a little pop so the committee connector Oh, it's quiet now. The fan turned off. Okay. Um, so everything fits. Okay. Uh, which is fine. Um, as I said, I'm not flipping it. Uh, I probably should, like you guys said, because having the, the connectors directly connect to the copper, uh, probably better. But I really, <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of want to know what Bruce's take on it is, because obviously they're not changing it. Even if, even if people, uh, you know, all the smart people out there who say, nope, the connector should be the other way, you're obviously able to fix your own, but does that help uh, everybody else who gets one from Prusa if Prusa keeps putting it this way? So I think it has to be fixed at the source. 
Here's a question for Chris. Have they started including this with the Mark III's? My last Mark III I got was Mar La March of last year, I think. So I'm really curious if the lubricant comes with the, all the printers now. Um, okay, so that's it. That's the Prusa Mini. If you guys have any other questions, uh, ask now. I'll answer them. If not, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, if you think they, that Prusa should be fixing the heat bed connector and putting it on the right way, leave a comment below in the video as well. Uh, absolutely look forward to any sort of feedback. And if you want me to dissect something else on here, let me know. Uh, there really isn't much to this machine, though. It's, uh, it's, it's a 3D printer. It's got all the, all the usual uh, suspects here. Um, <laughs> they have, all right, Prusa Lube with everything. We'll loose that bolt. Ah, so the uh, heat bed connectors will get looser and looser, if I'm understanding you correctly, and eventually that's going to cause a resistance, which is going to cause it to heat up. Do I have that right? <laughs> Later, Paul. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, I'll probably have another quick stream. Uh, I might do it tonight uh, or I might do it tomorrow. I have a whole bunch, and I mean a whole bunch, of uh, subscription boxes I just want to open up on a stream. Uh, I just don't want to make it part of this uh, Prusa Mini stream. So uh, I don't know when I'm going to do it, uh, but uh, everybody who joined today, thank you so much and look forward to my next stream. That might be tomorrow morning or it might be later tonight, depending on how I feel. But absolutely, everybody stay safe. Uh, stay away from that COVID stuff. Uh, I'm printing a whole bunch of face shields and uh, ear savers. I've, I think I've given away about a thousand for free and I'm continuing to give them away. Um, to any hospital I can find, but I'm at a point now where I've run out of hospitals that have asked for them. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's fun. It's, it's great to be part of this community, and I really, really, let me switch to me. See, I, I should be more professional on my stream here, guys. Um, oh, see, I really messed that up. So, uh, yes, I really love being part of this community, and I like uh, helping out however I can. So please let me know if you have any other ideas or suggestions for my videos. But, again, thank you for joining me tonight, and uh, I'll see you on the next stream. Bye, everybody.